Hi there and welcome uh, back again. Uh, now today we're talking about how to fix the climate uh, quickly and easily. It's a big topic, climate change, um, pollution, carbon dioxide, um, big issues. Um, how do we fix it and preferably how do we fix it quickly, uh, easily and cheaply? Because fossil fuels um, is the area that um, people want us to focus on in terms of cutting carbon emissions. Um, and fossil fuels, as the name suggests, is a fuel that we use every day. So how do you do it? Um, well, it's actually not that hard. Um, whatever some people may think, uh, or even all of us might think, um, it's actually not that hard to um, bring down our carbon footprint um, in a big way with current technology. And that's what this podcast is all about. So two ways to start off with is using um, green fertilizer um, for farmers. So where you give subsidized or free fertilizer to farmers that helps sequester carbon dioxide in the soil, in the carbon cycle. So it becomes food, um, basically through the fertilizer system. So you decarbonize farming um, by getting farmers to use green fertilizer. And there's companies around doing that already. Um, Undo Carbon in the UK is already doing that. And those projects uh, in total have the ability to sequester up to 10% of the world's human emissions. So that's 50 billion tons a year. So 10% of that is 5 billion tons a year, ultimately at scale in decades uh, to come that you can do that. So that's one way to use green fertilizers in the um, uh, for farming to decarbonize agriculture. That's a big one. Um, but also then <clears throat> you've got gas, natural gas. Now if you if you take natural gas and you crack it into clean hydrogen and solid carbon composites like graphite, graphene, carbon black, carbon nanotubes. Um, with no CO2 vented to the um, atmosphere, then you basically got a clean hydrogen product and a um, solid carbon product, which you can use for batteries and whatever else, or tires. That's very clever, because yes, you're using fossil fuel, but not as a fuel, you're using it as a feedstock, and you're not venting CO2 to the atmosphere. Um, and that's really the key, because um, two thirds of oil and gas is used for energy, so it's burnt, so rapid oxidation. Um, but the other third is used for fossil feedstocks, for chemicals, and we, we're going to need to keep that, but without burning, without the CO2 footprint. Um, so that's critical. Um, burning, as I say, is just another way of describing that, is rapid oxidation. So um, putting oxygen with hydrocarbons, combusting it and then ending up with water vapor and CO2. Um, but you don't have to combust hydrocarbons. It's better to get the value out by splitting the um, splitting the molecules up, the compounds up, um, and without oxidizing the carbon and turning it into CO2, which you have to vent to the atmosphere. So there's companies around like that, Hazar Group on the Australian Stock Exchange and Clean Hydrogen Technologies. They've both got very progressive turquoise hydrogen technologies, which is using the carbon rather than venting it as CO2 uh, and creating clean hydrogen. That's the future. Uh, done at scale, that can really make a massive difference because you still get your energy, you still get your graphite and graphene and carbon black, um, but without the CO2. So between green fertilizers and decarbonizing agriculture and turquoise hydrogen, you can make a huge difference to um, the CO2 emissions globally of humans um, on an annual basis um, before you talk about wind, solar, nuclear, hydro, geothermal, uh, biomass, um, so on and so forth. So there's very significant wins out there that are quick, easy, and quite cheap um, uh, that we should be considering. Now we can consider solar, wind, nuclear, geothermal, hydro, biomass, they're all good. Um, 
but they really need the horsepower of green fertilizer decarbonizing agriculture and turquoise hydrogen so you get as much hydrogen as you need plus solid carbon composites without the co2 emissions we really need those two to help push things um, to help push things along uh, but they're there they exist already these things can be done i'm sure they will be done and that's how you fix the climate and bring down human co2 emissions quickly easily and cheaply without losing jobs so don't despair it's certainly easy enough to do um, but perhaps it doesn't get talked enough about in the media hence the need for this podcast anyway tell me what you think andrew at keops.au that's andrew at keops.au thanks a lot